Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you a first look and a hands-on overview of the Samyang AF 35mm f1.4. This is for Sony FE, or full-frame mirrorless, and I'll be taking a look at, look at it primarily on a Sony A7R Mark III. Now, as you can see from the box itself, AF is kind of a big thing at Samyang these days, and makes sense as that their previous um, development had been exclusively on manual everything lenses. At one point they begin to make a transition towards you know electronic electromagnetically controlled apertures and so in that process to start to get um, XF information transmitted but more recently in the last couple of years they have started to actually develop autofocusing lenses. Now at this point they have done uh, a few Canon EF mount I think one Nikon F mount but primarily uh, they've developed starting on the Sony FE platform. Now, I've actually looked at one of these lenses previously, the 50mm f1.4, which I did as a part of a three-part comparison earlier on at the beginning of this year. And by the way, I do hope down the road to uh, take a look at a 35mm comparison here as well. And I've already, um, you know, kind of started to make preliminary arrangements. I definitely know I can get the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art in Sony FE. And I'm trying to arrange for the Sony Zeiss 35mm f1.4 four as well. But at the moment, I have too many other ongoing projects to even tackle that. And so I'll, for the moment, I'll be doing a straight up review of the 35 millimeter f1.4 Samyang lens. Now I do have, and what I've been using on Sony for when I want to shoot 35 millimeters as I've been using the Canon 35 millimeter f1.4 L Mark II via an MC11 or similar adapter on a Sony body, which works reasonably well for uh, different subjects, but I've been really uh, interested in this 35 millimeter lens uh, for one thing because I really do love the 35 millimeter focal length. I think if I had to live with just one focal length, which I hope to never have to be in that position, but if I were to choose just one walk around focal length, it would probably be 35 millimeters um, and particularly a lens, you know, that with a wide aperture that allows you to, if you want to get close to things, to throw backgrounds out of focus and, you know, 35 millimeter lens particularly f1.4 ones are certainly capable of producing a very nice bokeh quality and throwing backgrounds out of focus but also it's just great for a lot of things you can do um, environmental portraiture you can um, you know do things like landscape obviously or in the city it's just a great focal length and so I've been very intrigued in taking a look at this so we're gonna jump in right now and I'm going to give you a closer hands-on look at the build and the design and uh, show you a few initial images from the lens here as well let's jump in let's take a closer look so the Samyang AF 35mm f1.4 is obviously a pretty fair sized lens. In fact, uh, when it comes to some of the direct lenses that I might compare it to, it is essentially as uh, long or longer than any of them. And so as far as the Sony Distagon, Sony Zeiss Distagon 35mm goes, it is 112mm in length. The Samyang here is 115mm in length or 4.53 inches. Now it is a little bit narrower in diameter compared to the Sony Zeiss. Sony Zeiss has a 72 millimeter front filter thread. We've got a 67 millimeter front filter thread here, which by the way is shared with, you know, say like the Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4 on the Sony FE mount. Now, of course, with the Sigma lenses, without having it on hand, it's a little bit hard to nail down what the dimensions and weight will be in Sony FE mount because they haven't been great at updating that information for FE. And so one thing is clear, however, and that is that the Sigma will be the heaviest of um, any of these lenses. And I suspect it will come in somewhere around um, 770 grams. This one comes in at 645 grams, and uh, that is 1.42 pounds. And so that's it's actually a hair, not much, not enough, uh, I mean, it's, it's negligibly heavier than the Distagon lens, which is 630 grams or 1.39 pounds. So 15 grams is not really a big deal in the big scheme of things. 
It is interesting, however, in that the Distagon does have, you know, it has a manual aperture ring here that the Samyang lacks. It also has internal weather sealing, and so, um, it, which again, the Samyang lacks. There's no gasket here. There's no internal seals. And so, anyway, you have a fairly hefty lens. I think where you're getting that weight, however, is, is that this lens has, um, it has a lot of great glass in it. And as I found with the 50 millimeter F1.4 Samyang, when I compared it to the Sony Zeiss Planar uh, 50 millimeter F1.4, which I own, I found that the Samyang actually had better light transmission and also it had softer uh, bokeh back uh, highlights even at you know equal distances you know and they were larger circles which tells me that it has a, a good sized maximum aperture and kind of entrance pupil and also it is nice and bright. I think we're going to find that the same is true with the Samyang 35AF. In fact in comparison even into a really really excellent 35mm lens Frankly, I think one of the very best out there is this Canon 35mm f1.4. I have found that to be true. And so it is a heavy lens, but of course it's a heavy lens because it does have a lot going for it optically. Now, as far as the build goes, this is, uh, the barrel is actually made, I believe, of engineered plastics. However, the design and the, the kind of the feel of them is, is premium enough that Frankly, it's hard for me to determine whether or not it's actually plastics or a metal alloy. Um, others have noted that it is a plastic, so I'll take their word. But as far as the actual feel, this is really high-grade stuff, and it, it feels and looks really fantastic. It's kind of a minimalist design. As you can see, there are no external switches here. Um, there is nothing outside of a manual focus ring here. And so um, a very you know, kind of sleek design, but frankly, I find it a very, very appealing kind of look. And if you look at it compared to, say, the Canon lens here, this actually looks kind of like the more modern, sophisticated type look. And I even like its red accent ring a little bit better. Sorry, Canon, it's, it seems sacrilegious to say that of the, the famed red ring. But as far as just the general aesthetics of it, I actually like the Samyang look quite well there. As we saw, it has a metal lens mount, certainly a a number of metal internal components. That's part of why it is a heftier lens, but uh, not a whole lot going out here on the surface. As noted, there's a 67 millimeter filter thread up front. It does come with a little protection pouch and also comes with a plastic pedal shaped lens hood here. And of course, particularly when you got the lens hood mounted on there, here's on a Sony A7R Mark III. It's a pretty, you know, pretty big affair that we are working with here. There are nine rounded aperture blades that help with to retain circular highlights. It is an autofocusing lens, as we have noted. However, it does not have an image stabilizer. Of course, none of the, the lenses in this class, 35 millimeter f1.4 options on Sony do. That's really not much of a big deal because of having the steady shot inside or the in-body image stabilization in a number of the Sony bodies for which this lens is designed for. It has a minimum focus distance of 0.3 meters or right under a foot, so you can get nice and close. And it has a 0.17 times magnification, which is useful, but does lag a little bit behind the Distagon at 0.18. That's the Sony Zeiss, and so it gives you a little bit more magnification. And the Sigma 35 Art, a little bit more yet, 0.19 times magnification. The Canon is a little bit better than that. I think it's somewhere around 0.20 times. And so anyway, um, but certainly a useful figure. And that's part of what I enjoyed using lenses like this for is getting in nice and close. Now, as I've noted, uh, this lens does not have, um, does not have an AF MF switch. And so of course I map that to, um, just onto the body with the, the down arrow there. But I wanted to show you this just to give you a look at the actual behavior of the focus ring which unfortunately is not as uh, precise as what, as terms of the feel and the, um, the kind of the damping on it when you're wanting to do fine tuning. It's fine for major focus shifts, but I find that when I'm really trying to fine tune that I don't like the behavior as well as what I do on some other lenses. And so uh, the manual focus ring itself is not necessarily at the top of the heap. 
Now one thing that I will credit Sammy Yang for is that while they are new to doing autofocus, they are continuing to work to refine this. And so I, I kind of uh, gave the 50mm f1.4 a bit of a shellacking when it came to the autofocus performance on it compared to the competitors I was looking at. But I will note that they continued to do updating to the lens firmware. And so for example, although this lens is relatively recent, we're already on firmware version 03. Um, that and so they're continuing to refine the autofocus performance and I know that from talk to Sam Yang's engineers that they are continuing to refine that process to try to improve it even further and so uh, the good news is is that they are working and I think that we will see some ongoing improvements as we move ahead now let's just look for a second at the autofocus sound and so I want you to just be able to hear it does it's not silent but neither is it loud in fact the biggest thing I find is that if you are in AFC mode it continues to make a slight kind of scratchy sound however if you go into a single shot mode you have that tiny little scratching noise, but for the most part, it autofocus happens so quickly that it's quite silent by nature. And so the byproduct of that is that I, I have no real reservations about the autofocus speed, and I'll detail more about the autofocus itself as we move ahead. We'll be breaking down the image quality in the next episode, and so stay tuned for those things, because I think that really, that's where this lens has a lot going for it and particularly at the price point that it occupies and you know at full MSRP pop in the US market it's under $800 but I've seen it fairly frequently at the $600 or even less price range on sale and of course at that price point it's a pretty fantastic bargain particularly when you consider that you know I put paid close to $2000 for the Canon when it came out and the Sony Zeiss sits at $1,500. And so certainly a very, very strong price to performance ratio that we'll detail more as we move ahead. In the meantime, why don't you look at the description down below and there's a link to an image gallery. I've actually been shooting with this lens for a number of weeks already. I've just had so much other content to pour out that I've not been able to share anything with you. But byproduct of that is I've already got a lot of really great images that I'm proud of that I think you'll enjoy looking at. So take a look at those to get a sense. I always, I always like personally, if I'm interested in a lens, I like to look at photos that other people have taken. I realize that it's got their own style and their own processing involved. But at the same time, I also start to get a feel for what a lens is capable of in the hands of, you know, hopefully somebody that knows how to use it. And, and I hope to be able to do the same for you if you look at my image gallery there. You can also find buying links in the description down below to a number of different retailers. So if you'd like to get one for yourself, um, feel free to jump in there and do so. And stay tuned because I will be back with an image quality episode and then my wrap-up review that I'll be coming back to you with very shortly. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, you can also find links to follow me on social media or sign up for my newsletter, become a patron, and help to support this channel. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.